Well, I'll be pleasantly surprised with how all that turned out. Now, now, now. Hey, what's going on, YouTubulous? EXO coming at you here. Staying busy on the build. Got lots in store for today, too. Hope you guys had a nice New Year's over the break. Another 365 down the drain, man. Dang, 2023, I say this is the year. We all kick some serious butt, go for those goals, resolutions, the whole kit and caboodle. Me personally, I'd like to maybe gain some weight, handle stress a little bit better. And what about you guys? Anything that you're shooting for? In our last build video, we attached the subwoofer baffle to the steel frame, carefully marked, drilled, and countersunk all 50 holes for hardware, resized the bolts to recess into the wood, then finally glued and screwed everything tight. If you were one of the people left scratching your head last time wondering why on earth didn't this doofus just use the original carriage bolts from the top, well, it would have looked all chunky underneath, hear me out. Instead of a nice round button head barely poking out, I'd be stuck with a chunk of threads, nuts, lock washers, and regular washers all exposed. Definitely didn't want that. This way kept the chunkiness hidden away, low profile. Plus I'm less likely to slice my head open now. Been there, done that. Ah! But I did end up squirting a dollop of thread locker on all the bolts. Can't be too safe even with lock washers, right? Thanks for the reminder, guys. Now, before we get too busy working on the next steps, I think it's time for another mid-build weigh-in. I've been keeping track meticulously down to the ounce of every section, category, and area. So by my calculations, since our last weigh-in at 7,480 pounds, we've added the last floor squares, the final panels for the roof sides and bottom, tapered wedges for the wheel wells, quad baffle with steel frame, screws and hardware, wood glue and PL, and can't forget more expanding foam. That brings us to an estimated 490 pounds of added material since last time. So we should be right around the 7,970 mark. Of course, that's just a guess, but it should be a pretty good one. Let's go ahead and hit the road down to the nearest scale and see what the damage really is. Uh, yeah, just looking to get weighed up. All right, what uh, vehicle number would you like associated with this one? Uh, it's, it's just private use. All right, you can go ahead and pull on up. We got your weight. Thank you. All right, I'll be right back and I'll grab my ticket. All right, guys, here's the verdict live action and the behemoth build weighs 7,920 pounds. Heck, I'll take that. We're actually doing better than expected. It may be the scales tolerance is talking, but I'm not complaining. We're right on track. Let's go ahead and drive back to the shop and resume busting through the progress on the front. Let's begin right where we left off. After attaching the baffle to the cross supports, the only spots left over are the small seams up front where the square tubes meet the angle iron. Those need a welding. Each piece is already cut at five and a half degrees, so they both join up pretty decent with each other. You can also see how recessing the angle iron all those steps ago prevented the steel and screw heads from getting in the way now. Pretty happy about that. The front surface is nice and flat, even with a straight edge going across the seams, and all the tiny cracks and countersinks will be filled build up solid once the front panel gets glued into place. So let's finish those welds movie magic style. Flat 
flatter than a flashcard on the front. That little space lets the weld stay thick and juicy and helps keep the screw heads from hitting. Even though they're all countersunk, some still pop out here and there. So now I'll go ahead and cut these front dimensions, just something oversized out on the floor to flush trim up later. Got the front piece all cut to size, but before we install it on the cage, we gotta know where all this square tubing lays out. So I'm gonna mark those and go right down the line. That way we know where to even screw into on this piece. Everything will be visible and the screws will go in nice and quickly. Nothing better than hearing that sound, man. Kaplopping right into place. She is super snug on the right-hand side, and luckily, we got just enough space on the left-hand side to cram in another layer of three-quarter to make it extra snug. So basically, this is the last time we're gonna see it all exposed here as an exoskeleton here in the front. We're about to fully enclose the cage. Well, not fully. We got the rear to do still, but the front is coming right along here in just a few seconds. So I'm getting super excited. We'll go ahead and do the usual with our PL along all the steel. That way we can get a nice good seal. And on the angle iron, I'm gonna do a real hefty layer because remember we recessed that a couple of videos ago. That way we could have all these screws and hefty welds without interfering with the flatness of our uh, plane. So that's what we're gonna do next. Put it right up in there, squish it all in and go to town with our Tex Reamers here. The good old famous one and seven sixteenths have been doing the job here basically with all of the cage. So we'll follow suit, get her mounted and man, she's coming right along. She's nice and screwed up on there. Definitely used enough adhesive to get some good oozing and splooging going on. That's definitely one of my favorite things to see. <clears throat> More than enough adhesive, that's for sure. So the squares, they are empty. We gotta do the colloquial filling of the squares, so they say. We have 1.5 inch steel tubing. We're just gonna make up the difference to make it level with two layers of three quarter. And we gotta make sure to cut off all the corners of those squares because the welds in here are super beefy. It'll just help it make it uh, really snug in there, extra tight, and go on the opposite side to screw it all in. That way the screws that we use, I don't know, there's about this much of the heads that's not threaded. That will help suck it tight from the opposite side and do what we need it to do, which is just making it more dense and obviously flat back here. So let's go ahead and fill them squares and do exactly what we've already done a million times in this build, man. Let's go.
fellas, making some progress over here. Heck yeah, all 12 squares are fully mounted on the front. Man, look in the part two, whew. This is making my heart sing. It's looking more and more like a subwoofer setup every second. So sorry I didn't get every single square on film. I just wanted to kind of pause the camera a little bit. Since it's so scrunched in here, I'm pretty much in the way every time. So got them fully mounted. I did a seal job here too, a couple places. That's what we're gonna do next. There's kind of little minute details in the corners that I'm gonna fill in, but everything's looking great. I'll show you what the front looks like because I didn't plot out a single screw point but luckily it came out like perfectly positioned as far as symmetry goes. I'll go ahead and show you. Each square got mounted with five screws each in an X pattern surrounded by a square of metal mounting screws. Just needed to leave this strip above it that goes all the way down empty because that represents the angle iron underneath. Then I got a nice long strip above it of wood screws to cinch up the top real nice and all the rest was pretty much self-explanatory because we traced everything beforehand. Gotta love prepping. So now I'm gonna dive back into the underside and finish filling up these cracks. I'll come at you guys in just a little bit. It's too dang cramped in here. complain about that front of the box is all smoothed over with some heavy duty construction adhesive man i am absolutely loving this picture oh i can't even explain how i'm feeling right now but i'm gonna push through one of the next biggest parts of the build which is the box bracing or baffle bracing we already ran through the whole layout strength on video so check that out we got to do the ones in the center all 12 of them but i ran into a little bit of a snafu here because of these little pre-made mounting flanges. I had every intention on using these because they're, you know, really convenient. But unfortunately, the steel tubing that's located on the floor, the OD just barely goes past the holes on the flange. So what does that mean? Well, the hardware would probably slip right into a crack between the steel and the squares. So I gotta totally scratch that, make something custom to kick these holes out a little bit more. So I'll use some strip steel over there on the floor, make some nice little rectangles with some rounded edges, maybe even include some more hardware points for some more strength. All right, let's get something fabbed up real quick. Take a quick second to clean the edges and round off all the sharp corners for a nice smooth finish. Got the fancy new bench top grinder ready to go. Fast forward a whole lot of that and each plate is rocking some nice rounded edges. Really matches nice. Now it's time to plot out some holes over on the drill press.
looking good. Got all 12 brackets fabbed up at a 3 16th steel. Feels so satisfying to hold them in your hand too. It's like a big pile of pogs. You guys remember playing with those back in the day? Holy throwback. So the center three screws will be mounted into the steel. So we got special hardware for that. And the outside corners, all four of those, will be beefy wood screws. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what the heck, what is the center hole doing there if you're gonna be welding tubing right over it? Well, get this. Since we're using a good old plumb bob to mark the exact centers and verticals of each post, we can use that as a perfect reference point. So if my eye doesn't do the trick, we can line everything up that way perfectly. And in the end, I'm actually gonna have each and every one of these brackets flush mounted into the floor. I got this little mortising bit or flush bit, whatever you want to call it, straight bit I meant to say. And these will be recessed 3 16 down. You won't even notice them looking across. It'll be perfectly flat and smooth the whole way across. So let's get that process started and kick some more butt. Pretty dang good for freehand. Let me get a close up of that one. Woo. Well, I'll be pleasantly surprised with how all that turned out. I was expecting at least a little bit of yanking and pulling from the router, but it went through so smoothly. It's probably the freshness of the bit talking. The radius matched up perfectly with the round over that we applied on the benchtop grinder, so that's definitely ace. All 12 are recessed into the floor, nice and flat and uniform on all the edges. I'm loving this. So I had to do a quick little change though with the choice of hardware, because the screws that I had are only partially threaded and we want as much hold into the wood as possible. So I'm junking these and going with a slightly beefier fully threaded screw. Now, if you guys remember back at 252 Customs when we first started welding the cage, which was a total blessing, huge shout out to Justin. He let us know just how crucial this area can be. Even with all the bracing in the world, sometimes these suckers can pull right out of their sockets. So I wanna try to prevent that with this handy dandy Dremel here. I'm essentially gonna score down the middle in between the hardware points with this to create little fissures or grooves in the wood so all the adhesive has that much more surface area to attach to. So instead of two flat on flat surfaces bonding, there'll be little roots or little arms extending into the wood helping it hold that much better. I, I hope that makes sense. I mean, I, it makes sense in my mind. So let's try to apply that little bit of science here and see how it works. That should work out just fine. A little PL Ravine for good measure. Heck yeah. All right guys, let's waste no time and get these suckers mounted.
Here's another precaution that I took just to make sure that the screws stay put. Instead of just reaming them into place right away and calling it good, I go ahead and set the screw initially but back it out so I can cram all that extra adhesive down the hole. I also stick the nozzle right in and let her have it till she splooges out the edges. That way when I screw it back in at its final torque, all that extra adhesive will encompass it near 100%. Then I go around and cinch up the four corners before doing the last two screws. Works out pretty good for me. anytime soon that's for dang sure rock freaking solid fellas little different approach though i got to admit ordinarily these braces would be put together outside on a bench or something before you bring it in but here's why i didn't do that number one because of the flush mount brackets with a pre-mounted brace sure the whole thing can slide right in but right at the last second it would fall into the recessed holes making it 3 16th short every single time. Number two, I don't trust the pipe to stay straight without a tack on both ends. With my luck, I'd get the bases all welded up outside, then have one randomly trailing off to Denver when I get it in here. Definitely don't want that. And number three, for center reference, doing it this way helps keep the guide from the plumb bob above, and instead of being just a pin, a screw actually helps hold it down. Now for the tricky part. I just welded up a test sample all under the same circumstances here, and it's clear I need to watch for heat. Anything over four to five seconds of continuous welding slightly discolors the wood. Luckily, there's no real ash or incineration happening. I'd just rather be safe than sorry. So I'll keep the welds long enough to penetrate, but short enough to keep the saturation down. Let's get those braces going, my friends. Now with this part, it was important to evenly space all the welds. After giving plenty of cooling time for each burst, all eight spots at the base got filled in with another eight all around. With a good three seconds each, that's over 45 seconds of welding time per one inch pipe. Even with constant beats, I don't think there'd be that much. Not too shabby. This is the site I've been waiting for. Holy smokes. All 12 vertical blazers are in there, welded, flush on the floor, man. The whole kit and caboodle. I'm super thrilled with how this video came out from start to finish. Everything went through without a hitch. So if you enjoyed watching, definitely slap some love with a good old thumbs up. Building it takes long enough, but freaking 
filming it, getting the right angles, then going and re-watching and then editing these episodes. The whole rigmarole makes you go kind of insane, but it's definitely worth it in the end to have you guys' feedback and uh, you know interaction along the way. I mean, look at this. This doesn't happen every day, so thanks for joining the ride. And now that I got you here, I just wanted to say a quick something to all of those who have chosen to comment on my videos with encouraging words. This goes out to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. Whether it's about the build, about my personal life, or even about my appearance, it really helps make a difference. With a world so full of negativity, especially online, it's really a breath of fresh air to have that come through the pipeline. So thanks for all of your comments. I can't get to all of them because there's usually lots and lots. Um, that would be impossible, really. But I just wanted to talk to you now, here, one-on-one, -on -one, looking at you, saying thank you. Uh, I read them, and it, and it makes a difference. In our next video, we'll make even more progress by building our rear port and then capping it off with a nice rear wall. So by the time you see it next, we will have a fully enclosed bandpass subwoofer box. Oh man, this is getting all too real now. So in the meantime, be sure to check out Showtime Electronics. You wouldn't believe it, guys. The EXO coupon code has become the most used code on the entire site, and that is thanks to you guys. So your support means so much. Every little bit goes right back into making more high quality videos. And of course, you can score just about every brand under the sun down there. So it's a win-win for everybody. We also just landed Sundown. So go ahead and check that out. Everything from the entry level up to the top dog stuff is definitely up for grabs. So until the next video, this is EXO signing out. Feeling great. I hope you enjoyed it. I will talk to you in the next one.